Hey, in this video, we're going to start with the rate law and a straight line plot for zeroth, first, and second order reactions. And we're going to write out the integrated rate law from that straight line plot, as well as deriving the half-life expression for it. So we're going to start with a zeroth order. And in a zeroth order reaction, our rate law um, is rate equals k, because remember our rate is just a constant. It's not going to depend on the concentration. Our units of k, then, are going to have to be the same as our units for our rate. Now, rate is in molar per second or molarity per second. And so there's kind of two ways to write that. First, molarity per second. But also molarity is moles per liter. So we could also write moles per liter seconds. So two ways to write our um, units of k there. Now, the straight line plot of this is concentration versus time. We know for a zeroth order reaction, the concentration versus time graph will be linear. Now for writing our integrated rate law from this, we've already kind of done the integration part and in coming up with this straight line plot. So we can just write our integrated rate law by following the equation for a line, y equals mx plus b. We'll start with y. Um, our y is going to be our concentration at any given time t. And so that's right here. That's our y variable. Um, our x variable is time. right? That's on our x-axis or horizontal axis. Um, next for our slope, our slope is going to be the opposite of k. So remember, the straight line graph will give us the slope. But in this case, because our line is or has a negative slope, we're going to take the opposite of that slope to get our k value. So this slope is negative. k has to be positive, so we have a negative sign there. So if we go over here to our equation, the slope is going to be negative k, our k value being basically the positive of whatever our slope is. And then here we're going to write our y-intercept. Now the notation for that is going to be the concentration at time 0. So Basically, this means the initial concentration of A. So anytime you see the zero there, that just means initial. Here we saw the T. That means at any time, basically whatever number we plug in for T into this equation, that's going to give us the concentration at that time. But the zero just means when time equals zero. Um, and so this is going to be our integrated rate law for this. On the AP test, on the equation sheet, you'll notice that you don't get this you're just going to have to know this form of the equation. You can get it from the straight line graph, though. Um, next thing is we're going to write our half-life expression. We're going to have to derive that from the integrated rate law here. So I just rewrote out the integrated rate law. And we're going to substitute this concentration of A sub T at any given time. We're going to substitute that for half of our initial concentration. Now, here's why. The half-life means the time it takes for the initial concentration to cut in half. So let's say you started with one molar solution. The first half-life will occur once this initial concentration of one molar has gotten down to one half molar. In other words, that concentration is cut in half. Now, how could we substitute that in if we don't have any actual numbers? Well, all we have to do is write our initial concentration times one half. So let me write that out and show you what that looks like. Okay? So our half life is going to be the time we're going to be solving for t when our concentration is half what the initial concentration, whatever that value is. So we're just plugging in for the concentration at t. We're plugging in or substituting one half times the initial concentration. Let's write out the rest of our equation. Next, we're just going to solve this for t. So first step, subtract initial concentration on both sides. Here I've got half initial concentration minus initial concentration, basically a half minus a whole. And that's going to give us negative a half of our initial concentration. Remember, a half minus, minus a whole there equals negative kt. Another way that we could write that 
is instead of negative half initial concentration, we could write negative initial concentration over 2. So I rewrote that like that. Then I'm going to divide each side by k. Divide this by k. Divide this by k. Actually, negative k, because remember, we're solving for t. And so I'm going to rewrite that like this. t sub 1 half, that just means half-life, or the, the time it takes for the concentration to cut in half. So that's what that half subscript means. It means half-life. Equals the initial concentration, which is here, divided by 2, divided by k, and then these two negative signs cancel each other out, and we're left with initial concentration divided by 2k. One thing I want to point out before I go on is that the half-life for a zeroth order reaction does depend on the concentration. That's going to come up in our first order reaction as well, and I'm going to point that out um, as an important fact to know. You'll also notice that this does not appear on the AP Chemistry Equations and Constants sheet. So they probably won't have you do any calculations with that. Next, let's look at a first order. We're going to go through the same exact process. I'm going to go through it a little bit faster since we've gone through it once. Start with our rate law. K times concentration equals our rate. Our units, in this case, are going to be inverse seconds. Another way to write that is 1 over seconds. Something to the negative 1 means 1 over that thing, and so this is another way to write those units. It means the same thing as 1 over seconds. Now, why is that? We know rate is molarity per second. Concentration is molarity. And to get the same units on this side, we would have to take our molarity and divide by seconds. So k must be 1 over seconds. Molarity times 1 over second would be molarity per second. And so these are our units of k in this case. Our straight line plot, we know that the natural log of concentration versus time is linear. We're going to start with that. y equals mx plus b. And we're going to substitute in the relevant values here. So you'll notice this time, it's for y. I didn't just write concentration of a sub t. I wrote natural log of concentration of a at any given time because that's what our, horizontal, or our vertical axis is, equals negative kt. Remember, negative k is our slope. True right there. Plus natural log of concentration initial. So that would be our y-intercept. Whatever at time 0, t equals 0, whatever the natural log of the concentration is, that's what this y-intercept will be. Um, and I forgot to put, I'm going to put a box around that. And so for driving our half-life, we're going to do the exact same thing. Now, we have to do a little bit more uh, math here, exercise some of our um, Algebra 2 or pre-calc skills. Um, taking a look at this, I just started with the integrated rate law from this. Quick note on terminology. Here we've got rate law, integrated rate law, and then now we're going to drive the half-life expression. So I'm just going to do like I did before, and I'm going to substitute for concentration at t because I want my t to be the half-life time. I'm going to substitute this to be one-half times our initial concentration because remember, the half-life occurs when our concentration is half of whatever our initial concentration was. I'm going to rewrite the rest of this expression. And then I'm going to do some math to kind of break this down a little bit. Okay, let me explain that step. Natural log of two things multiplied together, one-half times concentration initial. I can rewrite that as natural log of one-half plus natural log of the initial concentration. I forget what that rule is called in math, but anytime you have the natural log of two things multiplied together, you can separate them out as a natural log of the first thing plus natural log of the thing that it's multiplied with. Write out the rest of that equation. I did two quick steps here. One, natural log of initial concentrations on both sides. So those are going to cancel out. Just subtract that from both sides. And then I'm solving for t. So I'm going to divide by k. 
and divide by k. And actually, I'm going to divide by negative k in both cases. So I'm going to get this. Time equals negative natural log of 1 half over k. I rewrote this with this number, negative 0 0.693. If you punch in natural log of 1 half into your calculator, it equals negative 0 0.693. So that is just, it's just a number. Um, plug that into the calculator, calculate that out, and it's going to be this right here. The negative will cancel out the negative. And then I'm going to rewrite this out in my final equation. Half-life equals 0 0.693 divided by k. If you look on your equations and constant sheet, it does give you this half-life equation. So you may, for a first-order reaction on the AP test, have to calculate a half-life. Now, if you know the k value, you can calculate the half-life. Or if you know the half-life, you can automatically calculate the k value, which comes really in handy if you know to look at this equation. The equations and constant sheet also gives you the integrated rate law, which is up here. So you may need to use this in the free response section at some point, but just know if you need that first order integrated rate law, it's on the equations constant sheet. It does not tell you that it is a first order integrated rate law though. You just need to know that the first order integrated rate law is the one with the natural log in it. A really important thing to point out, and I can't stress this enough for AP test purposes, is you need to automatically think, if you know anything about the half-life, if you know how much time passes, um, before the um, concentration cuts in half, that this half-life for a first order does not depend on concentration. Look on this side. Concentration is not in here anywhere. In fact, it dropped out in this step in our calculation. This means that any time you have a, a graph or a data table or, or if it just tells you that the half-life does not depend on the concentration, then you automatically know this piece of information, that, the, um, that this is a first-order reaction because the half-life does not depend on concentration. You can usually earn several points really easily and quickly if you remember this fact about first-order reactions. Half-life does not depend on concentration. That means if you have one molar of the stuff, it's going to take the same amount of time to cut to 0.5 molar as it would to cut from 0.5 molar to 0.25 molar. So look for that. Next, we're going to look at a second order. We're going to go through the same process. The rate equals k times concentration squared. Our units of k will be this. These look kind of crazy, but it's 1 over molarity times seconds, or molarity to the negative 1 times seconds to the negative 1. You could also say inverse molarity, inverse seconds. The reason for that is, remember, this whole side has to equal molarity per second. Over here, this is molarity squared. In order to get molarity per second, you're going to have to divide by molarity to cancel out one of those molarities. So you just have molarity not squared, just molarity on the top. And then for the k value, or for then, um, uh, you're also going to need seconds on the bottom, which is where this seconds comes in. And so your k units will be 1 over molarity times seconds. Real quick, I'm going to show you why that works out here, because my explanation was a little fuzzy, I think. Units-wise, A would be molarity squared. The K value units will be 1 over molarity times seconds. The, the squared cancels out with the molarity there. And you're left with molarity divided by seconds, molarity per second, which is our units for the rate. Um, next thing, our straight line plot, 1 over concentration versus time will be our straight line plot. Notice that this is the only one that has a positive slope, meaning that our slope equals k instead of negative k, because it's already positive, and we have to have a positive k. Start with y equals mx plus b. Substitute in those values, again, 1 over the concentration at any time, which is this vertical axis here, our y-axis, equals k, our slope, times our x variable, t, 
plus our y-intercept, which would be the initial inverse concentration. Um, next thing. I'm going to go ahead and box this again. Um, also, take note that on your equations and constant sheet, it does give you the second order integrated rate law, though it does not tell you that it is for second order. So you just have to know that 1 over concentration is the second order integrated rate law. We're going to derive our half-life expression the same way that we've been doing. So just as I did before, I'm going to substitute for concentration. I'm going to make it half of the initial concentration, because that's what half-life is. It's the time where the concentration is now half of our initial concentration. So how much time passes for the initial concentration to cut in half. Write out the rest of my expression. Um, I rewrote this like this. If you take 1 divided by a half, that would equal 2. So I rewrote this as 2 over initial concentration. I went ahead and subtracted 1 over initial concentration onto this side. So I subtracted 1 over initial concentration. And that's why I've got it on this side of the equal sign. I'm going to rewrite the rest of that. So I subtracted 1 over initial concentration. I'm left with KT. I can simplify this. 2 over initial concentration minus 1 over initial concentration, like denominators. 2 minus 1 is 1, which is going to give me... 1 over initial concentration equals kt. Solve for k. I'm sorry, solve for t. Um, divide k on both sides. So k is going to jump down here to the bottom of the fraction. My half-life equals 1 over k times initial concentration. Now again, take a look at this. Your half-life does depend on initial concentration. So if you're looking at a reaction and that half-life is changing, so, you know, so like the time it takes to cut it in half the first time, if it's different than the time it takes to cut it in half the second time, then you would know that it's not first order. It could be second order because that half-life is depending on the concentration. Or it could be zeroth order where the half-life depended on the concentration as well. All right, that's my video for um, taking the integrated rate law and the straight line plot and using that to write out the integrated rate law and then deriving the half-life expression. On the AP test, you will never have to derive this expression from scratch, but I want you to see where it comes from. Um, and then in particular, you need to know those three integrated rate laws. And you also need to know, back from here, um, you need to know that the half-life for a first-order reaction does not depend on the concentration.